All right, we're looking at the 2014 AP Physics B exam. This is number six, and it is a classic photoelectric effect problem. Lots of information given. Ultimately, we have 6.7.5 uh, by 10 to the 14 hertz light shining on a bit of metal. It is going to eject electrons. We have a battery here that we are going to connect to this plate to slow the electrons down, eventually trying to figure out how much voltage is required to stop the electrons. Therefore, once we hit that 0.65 volts, the photoelectric emission becomes zero. What does that mean? That means without the battery, electrons will be cruising with certain kinetic energy. The battery needs to be turned on to match that kinetic energy to basically stop the electrons from flowing. And that is going to be the stopping potential. A. What is the wavelength of the incident photons? Well, this one's nice and straightforward for you. A. Uh, the speed of light is equal to lambda f. C is constant, F is given, lambda is quite simply C over frequency, or 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. Divided that, divide that by 7.5 by 10 to the 14 hertz. Use your calculator, no point in trying to do this mentally. You're going to get 4 by 10 to the negative 7 meters. B is where the true knowledge of photoelectric effect is going to come into play. We are trying to figure out what is the work function of the metal. If you recall, the electric effect equation says the incident energy light must equal your work function plus any additional kinetic energy the electrons have. We're looking for phi here. That's the work function. So ultimately, the work function is going to be the incident energy, HF, minus the kinetic energy of your electrons. Well, HF is going to be simple enough. We know the frequency. We know Planck's constant. It's this kinetic energy bit I want to talk about. That kinetic energy will be equal, each individual electron's kinetic energy will be equal to the energy of the electrons as they're flying off of this emitter. Well, when there is no voltage, that is Ke max. You increase that voltage until there is no Ke. Therefore, the energy of one electron traveling through this much potential will indeed be the kinetic energy. Well, recall the energy of an electron is simply going to be the voltage times the charge of the electron. Or another way of looking at it is the definition of an electron volt. One electron volt is equal to the amount of energy one electron has when traveling through one potential difference of uh, one potential of difference. Therefore, nice and simple, the energy of each electron will be 0.65 eV. So this is going to be Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. Make sure you plug in units in. I'm getting lazy here. You need to do units. 7.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz minus 0.65 EV. I'm now realizing I have a math error here. This is fine. I can leave this as EV. This is not fine. This is a joule second. And I would have caught that if I had written my units in. So I'm actually going to go ahead and erase this. And I'm going to plug in the version of Planck's constant that actually reports it in EV seconds. And that's the 4.14 number. And that's simply because I needed to match my EV over here. I could have converted EV to joules instead. Either or will get you the same final answer. Uh, toss this in your calculator, you end up getting 2.45 electron volts. As long as you keep in electron volts, if you did it as joules, you're going to get a different number. All right, that's B. Now we want to know what is the minimum frequency in which light can be emitted. Well, think about it. That is, we're going to lower this frequency here until there's no Ke. Anything less than that won't meet the work function. Nothing happens. Anything more than that. We have Ke, so exactly that is the minimum required for photoelectric emission. Therefore, Hf, this is for C, Hf must equal phi. We already figured out phi. It's what we just calculated. So the frequency we're looking for is going to be phi over H. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stick with my EV numbers, so 2.45 EV 
divided by h, 4.14 by 10 to the negative 15 eV, we end up getting an overall frequency of 5.92 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now considering that this is, or 10 to the positive 14 hertz, considering that this is the minimum frequency required for photoelectric emission, it's also referenced as the threshold frequency, or F sub naught. D, the power per unit area of the incident light is increased, so we're going to increase the intensity. And the wavelength stays the same, so we're not going to change the wavelength or the frequency. We want to know, does the EMF, is the requirement to stop the electrons going to go up or, up or down? Ultimately, what it's asking you is, will the electrons gain more energy or not? And this is a great way of de determining, do you understand the photoelectric effect and the differences between classical physics and modern physics? And the answer is, it will remain the same. It's because incident light will not affect the energy of each individual electron. I'm sorry, in intensity of light won't affect the energy of each electron. All the intensity is going to try to do is increase the number of photoelectrons, but it will not increase the energy of each individual electron. The only way to increase the energy of each electron is to simply increase the frequency or ultimately decrease the wavelength. E. Well, now let's look at it. Interesting, because now it's going to say if the wavelength of light is decreased while the power per unit area of the incident light ray stays the same. That's we got to make sure we understand what that means. I'm going to come back to that. Does the number of electrons emitted from the metal surface per unit time increase, decrease, remain the same? And I know some of your gut would say remain the same because now we are changing the wavelength. And remember, wavelength is changing energy. Energy should not change the number of electrons. Instead, it should change the energy of each given electron. But it's this key thing here, power per unit area needs to remain the same. So if we're going to decrease the wavelength, we're increasing the frequency, my incident energy goes up. So incident energy goes up. That's that HF bit. HF is going to go up. But since the in overall intensity per unit area needs to stay the same, there needs to be a little bit of give here. We can't have more energy while still maintaining the same intensity unless we decrease the number of photons that are incident on the light. So while we are increasing the energy of the photon, we must decrease the overall intensity, or shall I say the overall number of photons, to allow the intensity to stay the same. Because the number of photons decreases, the actual number of electrons being emitted must also decrease. All right, that is it for number six, photoelectric effect of the 2014 AP Physics exam. Thank you.